So this far, you've been hearing about multidimensional poverty and the multidimensional poverty index and the different ways that you're able to take it apart and analyze it um, by groups and by dimensions. But this year, we decided to do a different um, index, uh, which looked at destitution, a very severe, extreme kind of poverty. So what we did was the following. We used the same three dimensions, the same 10 indicators, the same weights, and the same poverty cutoff. But what we changed was the definition of a deprivation. So now, you are deprived if somebody in your household is severely malnourished, or if you've had the tragic loss of two or more children. You're deprived if all primary school aged children are not attending school, and if nobody in your household has more than one year of schooling. You're deprived if you have no sanitation facilities at all and must resort to open defecation, if you don't have safe water, or if it's more than a 45 minute walk, if you cook with wood or dung, if you own no assets, not even a mobile phone, not even a radio. Those deprivation cutoffs are more extreme and if a person is deprived in one third of the indicators, we haven't changed electricity or, or dirt floor, then they are identified as destitute. We made this measure really to try to see the uh, existence of severe malnutrition and of these very terrible levels of destitution. And we hoped that there would be nobody inside that measure when we computed it. We've computed it for 49 countries at the moment, and these countries are home to 1.2 billion MPI poor, three quarters of the MPI poor people we have studied. And of the MPI poor people in those countries, one half of them are destitute by this measure. So it was quite a shock for us, quite a surprise, and a troubling finding. So we look forward to your insights on that. Of these, 97% live in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, so it really sharpens the focus on those regions. And clearly there is destitution in the other regions, but it tends to be a smaller fraction of the multidimensionally poor who are destitute. Now, did each of these eight destitution indicators contribute, or was one of them empty? We found that each of the indicators actually did carry its own weight and also change over time. So for example, 41% of those destitute people that we identified um, don't have anybody in their household with more than a year of schooling. Two thirds of them have someone severely malnourished at home. 69% of them don't own even one of the assets. And 90% practice open defecation. So this is just giving you a sense that we do need to look not only at multidimensional poverty, but even at these more acute levels of de destitution. The number of destitute people that we have identified is much less than the number of people who are $1.25 a day poor in the countries for which we have comparable data. And on this graphic, we depict the percentage of income poor on the bottom, on, on the horizontal axis, with the poorest income poor group being DRC at the right. And the level of multidimensional poverty is vertical with the highest poverty above. <coughs> and you do see that they don't tell precisely the same story. For example, Niger and Swaziland have about the same $1.25 a day levels of poverty. But in Niger, 89% of people are multidimensionally poor, and in Swaziland, uh, sorry, in Niger, 69% of people are destitute, and in Swaziland, it's 8%. And also, um, Cameroon and Haiti or Tanzania have rather similar levels of destitution, but in Cameroon, income poverty has been controlled whereas in Haiti and Tanzania, it is more than 60%. So again, even when we focus on these terribly poor or destitute people, we are finding that these measures perhaps <coughs> are a complement to income poverty measure, making visible some deprivations that are not otherwise captured. But there is good news. Um, we have also looked at changes over time for all 34 countries, and the rates of reduction of destitution tend to be faster than the rates of reduction of poverty. And that is a great relief for us. And our champion actually is Ethiopia. Ethiopia reduced destitution by 30 percentage points. 30% of its population um, uh, are no longer destitute between the years 2000 and 2011. And there are other countries that had very, very strong reductions in destitution, including Niger. So 
as you have seen through the different presentations that we've provided, the MPI, in a sense, can be used simply at the national level or even perhaps with some estimations for regional aggregates. But then you can zoom in subnationally by ethnic group and by indicator to try to get more of a sense of what multidimensional poverty is. And as we've shown here, even with the ordinal data that we use for poverty, we can look at the more extreme levels of deprivation and try to understand them across countries as well. So that's our overview in just under 30 minutes. And I hope we've left you with lots of questions. And so our hope in doing this research is very genuinely that we develop partnerships with other people who have more understanding than we have about data, about country cases, about particular communities, and would be able to use this more powerfully, perhaps, to reduce the suffering so many face. So we've invested this year in a lot of web resources, and we do hope you might use them. Um, we started with the story of Natalie. It is one of the new ground <coughs> reality checks or life histories that we have done this year. And we do these each year, perhaps as a team, to keep in touch with people and how their lives show uh, up this kind of poverty and also what we overlook by what we measure. But we also have policy briefings on each of the topics, not just the ones that you have, those who are in the room, the two and eight pager, but also on destitution, inequality across the poor, rural and urban poverty and changes over time. Then we have infographics for your teenagers, for uh, other people who might want a very simple presentation of poverty and destitution. Um, is La Poor? Um, and then we do have a new interactive data bank, and that hopefully is, is live and working today online. That has the map that Adriana showed, it has graphics, um, and you are able to plot different variables together to get what you need for your own presentations and analysis. And finally, um, oh, there are the academic papers, which is not final, um, but we do hope that you will give us some comments. Um, and if you are really an uber geek, then you would like to perhaps download the data, and it's all available in Excel files. And so we do hope that that can be downloaded uh, with a lot more information than we have shared with you here today. So we do very much look forward to an ongoing interchange um, and to many minds working on this together. And finally, it, it, it really is from all of the team that I would like to thank you for coming here or thank you for logging in. There are many people from OFI who are here present in the room who have not spoken, such as Usha, who helped from the uh, calculations team or the entire communications team and um, policy team. There are also others who are not present with us here, like Mihika, who was also part of our calculations but is listening in from India, and others from other parts. So on behalf of all of us, we'd like to thank you, and we very much look forward to your wisdom and your insights as we close. Right, well, thank you. Um, <laughs>